Hey everyone, it's Mike with It's Pittsfield Tonight. I'm going to jump right into it, and I'm going to pick up with last night's city council meeting, and last night being Tuesday, uh, December the 8th. So uh, I guess the first word I can use to sum that up is, wow, <laughs> that was unbelievable. Um, where to start? Okay, so let's start with the indoor dining issue and restaurants. So um, to start with, Craig Benoit, who is the owner of the Hot Dog Ranch, uh, I've become good friends or a good a, a good acquaintance of, of Craig over the past couple weeks. I like him a lot. I've uh, interviewed him a couple times. And uh, one of the videos I did where I encouraged, you know, I think all the restaurant owners should get together and form a group. And he, Craig took the reins on that and made that happen. So Craig helped put together this restaurant owners association where they're working as a, as a group now um, to address a lot of these issues. And, and specifically what started it was the issues surrounding the coronavirus restrictions. So he called in uh, at the beginning of the meeting for the public speaking part. And he, one of his things he wanted to ask for one, he thanked the board of health and the mayor for reopening indoor dining. He also stated that they could use a little bit of assistance uh, as far as educating the public on a lot of these guidances. It shouldn't all be just thrown on the restaurant owners. Maybe some per public service announcements or something to help. Now, that also, that being said, I'm more than willing to put some videos together free of charge. I can brand them for some of the restaurants, whatever they want. Please reach out to me. I'll put some like 30 second little ads together that goes over all the things you need to do uh, under the new guidances uh, to be able to attend indoor dining. I have no problem with that. So if you're a restaurant owner in Pittsfield, contact me. I'll get that done. Um, and it's free of charge. So that was his big thing, but he called in and he thanked them. So, and I agree with him at that. It's, it's, there's a lot of this, the educating of the public has got a lot to do with those who are putting these rules and regulations in place. You can't put it all on the owners. You can't be there just to punish them if something goes wrong. So, uh, that being said, uh, most of the counselors, not all, uh, but the ones that did speak up were very much in favor of the indoor dining ban. Councillor Mafuccio, uh, our Ward 7 city councillor, said if he had been the mayor, uh, he would have kept that in place. He believed that uh, it was the right thing to do and we should still have a ban on indoor dining. Um, councillor Pete White said the same thing. Um, councillor Cavey said that he called, um, I believe, Ricardo Morales, which was kind of weird. But anyway, that he went over the data and he says there's a direct correlation uh, between the ban on indoor dining and the numbers going back down. And I found that kind of odd because the numbers that spiked up, we were told, were based off of a couple particular incidents based around a Halloween party, uh, a private party and one at uh, a couple restaurants that were involved in this. But they were particular incidents. And because indoor dining, the ban that was on that was just in Pittsfield and nowhere else in the state, leave alone the county, nowhere out of 351 communities, just Pittsfield, people were still attending indoor dining. They were going to Dalton and Lanesboro and Lenox and Lee and other places. So it wasn't stopping indoor dining. So if based off of the data that Patrick Cavey is saying, it was a direct correlation to the ban on indoor dining having the numbers decline, are you sure that those numbers didn't just decline because the amount of time that had passed since those parties, the private par party and what happened at those particular restaurants? Because that makes more sense to me, and that, I thought, is what the data was showing, not just looking at charts, because we know there were particular incidents that spawned this. But... Uh, if that was the case, then wouldn't we have seen a massive increase in the other communities that were getting all the indoor dining traffic? Wouldn't we have seen a huge jump in Lenox and Dalton and Lanesboro and all these other places? Because people from Pittsfield, the reason they weren't ordering takeout and delivery when they put the ban on indoor dining just in Pittsfield is because they were going over the line. And everybody knows, I mean, I drove around and was looking at parking lots and everything. I'm not going to post any pictures of that because I support all our restaurants. I don't blame the restaurant owners for their businesses outside of Pittsfield being busy. But I just wanted to see for myself were people still going out, and absolutely they were. The same people that were attending indoor dining in Pittsfield were attending at other places. So 
I'm going to have to disagree with that. But those are the counselors that say that it was a good thing and needed to happen uh, and should still be happening. Uh, so there was that. The next thing that happened was Counselor Mafuccio, uh well, and uh, before I finish this, we were talking about, well, no, I'll get to that later because this is next on the agenda and it gets back to the indoor dining thing. But anyway, Counselor Mafuccio, who is a, a big advocate for those in homelessness and which I applaud him for that. That's a, something that I am very passionate about myself, helping the less fortunate and trying to really find, I think we as a community need to find the right ways to address that issue. Well, I covered the story going back in the year with the emergency shelter at St. Joe and when they abruptly closed it in July and it caused this huge problem at Springside Park, all the parks, but particularly Springside Park. I broke that story about ServiceNet throwing all their stuff in the dumpster and, you know, we heard mixed messages. We were told from the mayor and our community development director that um, there was never a problem at the shelter with hot water and that um, it was the Diocese of Springfield that told them they had to get out, they had to be out of there by August 1st. And we heard so many mixed stories on that. But nonetheless, when I broke the story about what was happening at Springside Park, my intent with that was to get them to say, hey, this is unacceptable. We can't have encampments setting up in one of our prized parks in the city. We've got to reopen the shelter. Rather than reopen the shelter, they continued to let that happen. They brought in porta potties. They let people establish themselves there. Now they want them out of the park because there's been problems from it. And of course there would be. Um, so the shelter opened back up at St. Joe last month. And according to Councillor Mafuccio, it's a disaster. I mean, he made some serious accusations that was about criminal activity going on in there that involved staff and everything. He's saying that uh, solicitation of prostitution and he's saying that the women have no hot water still in the in the showers for the women's room and they have or shower curtains and they have to go into uh, the men's room and they're very uncomfortable with that uh, people are saying that it's still not being kept up correctly that there's staff there that are coming in uh, under the influence of alcohol and being un inappropriate and some of the people at the park are saying they're afraid to go in there based off of what happened last time and the things they're hearing now. And it was some pretty hardcore, serious accusations that sounded criminal. Um, Counselor Persep sounded like he didn't believe that. He wasn't, he didn't believe that they were valid, maybe. I don't know. He was upset, saying one of the things he said is, well, if somebody solicits somebody, an employee is soliciting, soliciting someone for sex or something like that. Uh, or not allowing people in or something. He said, you know, we can't go after ServiceNet for one bad apple or something. Uh, it got out of control. It was very heated. The stories Councillor Mafuccio were telling were jaw-dropping for most people watching that, and you could see it on the faces of the other people there. So that got pushed over and referred to the police department, the district attorney's office, uh, a couple, a state agency. We're going to find out what happens there. I don't know if that was the right place to do that, but he did. Uh, so that happened. Uh, and it was shocking. It was absolutely shocking. And I hope those things are not going on. Uh, you know, I've never been a big fan of ServiceNet, to be honest with you. I, I, I mean... Just I, I, from the things I learned over the summer with the condition of Barton's Crossing, you know. But I, again, these were accusations. I don't know the validity of them myself, but hopefully an investigation has started because of this. But it was shocking to hear that. And uh, th that's all I can say. So you should check that out if you haven't seen it. But there, we'll, be getting, we'll be getting some updates on that. Then we got back into restaurants again. So Councillor Mafuccio again, Anthony Mafuccio, the Ward 7 Councillor, brought up Yuki Cohen, who was an at-large counselor and the owner of Methuselah's Bar. And in this packet, there was a list of restaurants that had been getting, getting warnings or had been reported uh, for violations. And Methuselah was on there. And they did get a written warning or a warning for 
being over capacity and serving people at the bar without food service, which both of those are big no-nos. And they were given warnings for that. Counselor Mafuccio, who has been very critical of the restaurants, he wants to see them closed right now during this. He wants a ban on indoor dining. I shouldn't say the restaurant's closed. He wants a ban on indoor dining right now. Well, he, he's been very critical, and he says that he said it's not fair that she just got a warning when we've fined and went after other businesses uh, for things similar, if not less, but similar. And he wants it referred to the licensing board to suspend her license. That caused a whole thing. Now, Counselor Cohen had to <laughs> recuse herself and bow out. Dina Lampiazzi and Pete White, I, I, you know, Dina's on the licensing board. So it involves her. Uh, again, it was a lot being thrown out there. It got very heated. Uh, Counselor Cavey, who I guess used to work for Yuki Cohen at Methuselah, uh, Counselor Mafuccio said he shouldn't be involved, and Cavey said he only worked there for one shift or three shifts. I don't, I can't remember. It got crazy. I was waiting for Jerry Springer to come out. It was pretty embarrassing, to be honest with you, watching this show. Uh, Counselor Persip said a few more things, and he did not look happy from the minute this meeting started. He did not look like he was in a good mood. Um, so it's getting referred over to the licensing board. Now, here's the thing. You know, you talk about the cliques and the gangs, and they're, they're real, whatever you want to call them. They're all friends with each other. They're kind of tied into each other in our city government. And if it goes to the licensing board, if that does happen, I don't see how Counselor Lampiazzi as a member of the licensing board and a fellow city councilor to Yuki Cohen, how she can even be part of it in the licensing board because she's publicly uh, made a statement on this already. When Yuki Cohen made a post saying there was rumors floating around that she had some problems at her restaurant and they weren't true, and if you had any questions, call her. Well, a lot of people came out to defend her, including Dina Lampiazzi who is the Ward 6 city councilor and city member of the licensing board and in the DA's office. Now, the DA's part really doesn't have much to do with it at all, but unless there was criminal activity. And I don't even know what her role is there. She's like some administrative thing. But anyway, she said on that post right here, she put, thank you to, this is Dina Guilampiazzi to Yuki Cohen on the post about, uh, rumors about things happening at Methuselah's. And Dina said, thank you for being such a responsive member of our local restaurant community. It is reassuring to know when restaurant owners are putting the health and safety of their patrons above all. Stay positive, keep doing what you are doing. So kind of like she's already made her decision on that. Uh, Vice President of the City Council, Pete White, put, uh, can't wait till I can get back in for tacos. So, I mean, a lot of the I, I, city councilors have liked that post and were involved with it, members of the licensing board. So, you know, it's a tricky situation. And, and again, it just adds to the to the fire that everyone believes in the city that there is biased. Now, I don't know. I'm not saying there is or not, but that was a crazy meeting and it suggested it. So we're going to find out what happens with that. Sorry, I'm looking at the clock because I'm trying to wrap all this up into one. But it that part again, got so heated that uh, Councilor, uh, or, or City Council President Peter Marchetti ended up muting um, Councilor Mafuccio. It, it really did get heated, and the whole thing was just a, it was a circus. Uh, you know, right down to even Councilor Persip kind of went against everything that Councilor Mafuccio said. Councilor Persip again said, you know, don't come down. Uh, we're not being fair with uh, service not that he has a one of his close friends, uh, Mrs. Flatbush. I don't know who she is, but it's some Mrs. Flatbush or something that he said uh, is a good friend of his that is with service not. And he's afraid that they might get sick of this and leave the community and it was crazy. The whole thing was crazy. Uh, so that all happened. And we'll, we'll, I guess we're going to find out where that goes. Will that go to the licensing board? And last but not least that I have to mention is what's going on with at Hillcrest Hot Commons. And that's the nursing facility where we've had this massive outbreak, uh, a lot of deaths in there, over two dozen 
uh, a lot going on and, and they're working hard. The state is involved. So I know a lot of people have posted rumors and stories and testimonies on the page and I understand people's emotion and everything, but I, I don't know what's going on in there and I haven't done any investigating to find out what's going on in there. So I really don't want to say on that. Uh, all I want to say is I know people that have family in there. So I think saying that all these horrible things are going on is not going to do any service to anybody right now except scare family members that can't get in there because of the restrictions and the virus. And it's not good. Uh, I brought this up in the last video that uh, our state rep, Tricia Farley Bouvier, posted that all these people died scared and alone. Uh, she f did since then delete that off of that post, and thank God she did because that was pretty irresponsible. And she also suggested that there was a direct line between these parties and indoor dining and what's happening at uh, Hillcrest Commons, which caused restaurant owners to getting death threats and uh, all sorts of turmoil. Uh, which was fascinating to me that she did that and so irresponsible. So I, I, I know her heart probably is in the right place, but that was wrong. Sorry, I'm looking at the clock because I'm running out of time. Um, so she changed some of that on the post. But, you know, again, it goes back to these clicks and groups. And just to give you an example, how they all kind of, in my opinion, work together. And I feel like I can back that by saying some of these things like, you know, them publicly supporting Yuki Cohen before any of us even knew that there were violations against Methuselahs. And I'm not putting down Yuki Cohen. I'm not as a business owner. I don't think she's a great city councilor. She hasn't done anything yet, but it's also been a crazy year, but she doesn't even speak. The only time I heard her speak, she plugged her own restaurant, which was weird. But anyway, um, and she did do that. But this is an example. When the Berkshire Eagle did an article, one of the articles on, on some violations with the district attorney. Uh, Trisha Farley jumped right in on their Facebook page and put, this reporting is ridiculous. And she went on to say a bunch of other stuff. And it was, again, our politicians go to, I mean, she had no problem even calling the Berkshire Eagle basically fake news, saying this isn't a real story. To make this into a headline, I just have to ask why. She's saying it's here, it's, a, it's reporting is ridiculous. And there was other stuff she said, but it's again, that's, that's why we need change, everybody. We need change. Politicians shouldn't be working in groups serving each other. It's their constituents. So I hope people remember that it's time for new blood in city government. And it really is for the betterment of the city. This arguing and feuding and this and that, it's too much. It's too stressful. And that city council meeting last night was a prime example of it. So anyway, that's it for now. I know it was a lot to cram into to this video, but I will be doing uh, another video tomorrow and I'll try to take these segment by segment and, and get into detail on all these situations. So if you haven't seen the meeting, Pittsfield Community Television's website, you can go check it out and watch it in its entirety. And uh, that is it for now. Everyone have a great day. Stay warm, stay safe, wear your masks uh, and, and distance and do everything that you're supposed to do. And vaccines are being mentioned a lot. And hopefully, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel is right around the corner. And, and just in a, in a couple, two to three months, we'll start to be out of this. So again, that's it for now. And I'll catch you all tomorrow.